All right, on the ropes out here at Oxy Hill Boxing yes, with the 2021 EBA Go Boxing World Champion, man. Congratulations, man. Look at this, man. I got to ask, man. I want to go back a little bit. We actually going to go back in time for the people, man. You actually started out in football with Coach Darrell. Started out in football. That's what started on the football field. Boxing Hill Road Runners. Now, now tell the people, man, how did it transition over to boxing at that time? I was with the Ox Hill Road Runners, playing football for him, and he would know me from football, and I would get in trouble in school for fighting. He knew I knew how to fight. And then once I was getting to like middle school and I wasn't growing, I wasn't progressing, like getting bigger, he, was, he wanted me to come to the gym. I came to the gym and I boxed. I was like, yeah, I like this sport. And he was like, yeah, it'll give you a better chance to be successful because of your size and the way you built. You already know how to fight. You know, going back to that time, could you ever imagine what you have today, being a, having gold, being the Under Armour Boxer of the Year, coming from the sport of boxing and over, I mean, coming from the sport of football over into the sport of boxing? I could have never imagined it. I was just boxing just to keep me in sports and everything. Then at first it was just like Golden Gloves, Silver Gloves, Nationals. And once I got to that stage, I was going international, now Worlds, like, it's just all, it's just a dream. Like, I never imagined all this stuff. I never knew that the amateur boxing game came with all this. Now, during that time, did you ever miss the sport of football? Did you ever Always. think you would transition back into it? I thought I would. I was I was thinking about actually playing football my, my senior year. Some of my friends and people from school that knew me was like, man, just play football one last time. Like, people I grew up playing football with, they knew I was good. So I, was, I was thinking about playing my senior year, but I didn't. Now, I want to go back uh, to the Nationals. That was the, the beginning of the big boy stage, man, where you went in and, what was that, five five, um, five fights during that time? Five fights. And that was all elite level competition during that time, man. Do you think that particular time prepared you for the world stage at the ABA? Uh, my coach, he just gives me the best sparring. Uh, even before that tournament, I was sparring with the best. I was sparring with uh, Raymond Ford, uh, Rasheem Jefferson, you know, people like that. Uh, just the top, top names. Of course, Stevenson, uh, Lamont Roach. So I was getting all the top names. I was sparring them, and I was, I was getting better and better. You know, speaking on that, talk about the importance of getting that, that great sparring that you talked about which prepares you for these big stages like this. Because if you're in there with somebody and you're just taking advantage of them and, and beating them up, you know, sometimes, you know, we talk about that sometimes, how you might have a lesser competition in the ring, but you, you want to learn and not, you know, destroy their confidence. Yeah. And, you know, with that being said, going into the first batch of EVA, you took that fall, man. What was going through your mind at that time? I was just, I was mad that I fell. I got the clip because uh, I was getting a lot of backlash, like people overseas saying you should have lost, he dropped you, but he stepped on my foot, first of all. Stepped on my foot, but caught me with a clean shot at the same time. Uh, I just knew I was going to get up and win the fight. I knew it was going to be easy. I knew my talent, I knew my skill, and I just got up, and after that, it was easy from there. What was your mindset going into that match with the, the reigning world champ during that time, man. My, my, my mindset was shock the world. I already knew my talent. I've been in there with the best. I seen what I could do with the best. I already knew my talent. I said, man, this man can't beat me. And that was my mindset. I can't be beat. And I, I at, went in there and did At any point in time, did, did you feel like you had to make sure you didn't leave it in the judge's hand? Like, uh, clearly show that you were the dominant fighter on that evening. Man, yeah, I, that was my game plan to do everything, like, to make sure that they couldn't take it from me. I, I was boxing beautiful, counter-punching, then I, I was sitting down on my punches, working in the pocket. No way, shape, or form was he outscoring me. Now, going into the finals, man, confidence level high. You just want to make sure you get to that last step of completing the goal, of bringing home the gold, man. How, how satisfying was it knowing that at the end of that third round, man, you knew you was going to get your hand raised? It was, it was very satisfying because all my hard work had paid off. Like I was, in a, I was away from family, hard times, you know, losing weight for about and just a hard training camp. Training in Colorado in a different altitude, harder to breathe. 
So I worked hard for the goal and I knew that I had accomplished it. So it was a, a good uh, burden to have off my shoulders knowing that I'm a winner. Now, I, I, I got to ask this, man. What's next for Jamal Harvey? Because I know the pressure is going to be on there. Promotional companies out there. Man, there's no pressure with that. It's keeping them to the side, keep them in the loop until I go pro, but I'm I'm waiting for 2024, possibly 2028. Who knows? But I'm definitely going really? to 20, I, I was definitely gonna ask going to, that. Definitely going to 2024 though. Definitely 2024. Definitely 2024. How much pressure is it from not you from the outside world saying we want Jamal to go pro. We want Jamal to go pro. There's no pressure. It's my career what I want to do. I'm in control, not them. You know, speaking of that 2024 Olympics, man, just thinking of, of, of the last one in our area with uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, man, how big would that be, man, to bring home the Olympic gold to our area, man? That'd be, that'd be big. Uh, I'm not sure the last time a male brought home a gold. Last one's Andre Ward. Uh, Andre Ward. Brought home a gold. And, so, I, and I think that last, the last U.S. boxing was probably what, Carissa Shields? Yeah, last I, U.S. Gold, gold, Carissa yeah. Shields. But that would be big. That's a Not everybody can say that they was a Olympic gold medalist. It's a lot of world champions out there, but only very few are Olympic gold medalists. So that's you that's know, in a lifetime. Since I've met you, man, you've always talked about that, man. That was very important to you. Why, explain that to people why that is so important to you to get that because it's easy to go like you said go run to a promotion company start making the money man but not everybody in, in, in the world is an Olympian a gold medal Olympian I'm going to tell you why you have to train Olympics come around every four years you could get a title shot when, if you have a good promoter you can get a title shot whenever you want you can fight for a they making all types of titles now. Like it's not that hard to become a world champion, so it's just not important to me. I want I want something that's hard to, to achieve. Now, when you won, uh, when you got the gold, man, who was the first call that came through? First call that came. I'm not sure it was the first call. You know, after we, uh, after I got done, you know, got to do drug testing and stuff. But the first call, I, I called my coach because without him, I wouldn't be here. He got me into the gym. He got. He got me where I was today, onto the U.S. team and all that. And then after my coach called mom and dad, and from there, just the rest just fell in line. You know, it, one of the things that um, I noticed, man, you, when um, you were thanking people, man, you had to give a huge shout out to Coach Dale and Oxen Hill, man. Yeah, had to. Like. Without Oxen Hill pushed me, all the coaches that ever came through here, Coach Sean, Coach Lamore, Coach Kia, my dad, like they all just pushed me in the gym to become better and better. I thought I was going to national after national. They never let me get complacent. They always kept my mind sharp. Promoters and stuff coming to me, they always kept me on the right track. Like don't don't sign, don't do anything. Run it through, think it through, and I'm just I'm just happy for it. You know, with that being said, Jamal, what's next for you? Because like you said, right now, you, you're you going to stay in the amateur program. And, and there's nothing wrong with that because I look at someone like Alomachenko, mm -hmm. who had a great amateur career. And you can make a lot of money doing that. A lot of people don't understand that either. Yeah, you can make a lot of money doing it still in the amateur if you, you just have to be you know, smart. I mean, be smart and the right sponsorships. Yeah. Get sponsorships. And you know, just stay, stay winning, stay positive to to the youth in the community, and just don't mess your career up. Let me ask you, uh, Jamal, what was the toughest thing that you had to deal with in your travels over there in uh, Serbia, man? Because I, because I, like you said, you 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 were there without family, yeah. without friends. What, what was the toughest thing you had to deal with, and how did you overcome it? The toughest thing I had to deal with. Oh, let me see. I don't know. I didn't really think anything was tough. It was just uh, uh, not being uh, being with my family. No, we ain't really have like no. We only had our team. I had a great team behind me. We had mom, dad there, no coach, my coach, who regularly in my corner. But I just adapted well to it. Hey man, Jamal, I truly, truly appreciate your time today on Knowing the Rose, man. Congratulations, 2021 Evo World Boxing Champion, yes, man, featherweight. Man, congratulations, big dog. Thank you.
Man, look at this, man. Look at that, right there. Oh, man. Let me get it for you. Let me get it for you. Hell oh, yeah. You already know. You already know. Look at that right so there. So what's that? What's that on there? Can you tell you how much that gold nugget worth? Yeah, that's worth the serial. Now? The serial number. And for people that don't know, that's real gold. Real gold. <laughs> real gold. I know that's authentic. Authentic real gold. Yeah. We'll be coming up with that uh, gold-plated stuff. It's authentic here. Appreciate you, Jamal. Yes, sir. Oh,